Okay, hi everyone. So today we are team three and we'll be discussing the project that we were able to design, work on, and build, which is called the Safe Club. Hi, I'm Anjana. I kind of took on the role as project manager, meaning I did a lot of the planning and um, kind of developing where we were. Hi, my name is Mimi and I am I was part of the software design. I'm Rania and I designed a majority of the glove and worked on the hardware aspect of it. I'm Emerald and I worked on the overall design and graphics of the presentation as well as the glove design. So we thought about what in our situation currently, like what is happening and what can we really do to adjust this problem? And so we're just all wearing masks as a mandatory. And then we noticed that there has been a lot of just disposable gloves around parking lots, like just everywhere, just being trashed around. But we also noticed that people have just constantly touched their face daily and it seemed like it was very unavoidable and it's kind of hard to remember not to touch your face because it's a habit and so with COVID-19 and everything we figured that without taking the precautions you can get sick. So our solution to the face touching issue was that we created a glove that will have an LED that can light up when a person is about to touch their face, which ultimately can reduce the amount of trash that's around the world. And it can also reduce the amount of people that get coronavirus due to face touching because that's one of the main methods of transmission. And it's really important that people continue to stop touching their faces in order to stop this pandemic. So next slide. Okay, so um, our, the main idea behind our glove was to build an ultrasonic sensor, which can be which can uh, use um, distance to detect how close in proximity you are to for, to your hand touching your face. And so here we we had an LED light that would notify the user when their hand was getting closer than um, ten centimeters to their face. This slide basically shows a picture of our actual circuit and the fritzing image that we used to design the, the circuit. It also shows our first demo, if you could play that really quick. So before actually attaching the sensor to the glove, we wanted to make sure that it worked and this was the first video that we were able to take of it working. And this is our our prototype where we attach the circuit board to the glove. So this is our official demo. So this is after we completed all the testing methods and we tried to see which layout would be the most efficient. So Mimi, if you could play that. So as you can see in the video, Anjana is about to touch her face and as she gets really close, the LED lights up, which is kind of a warning signal to the person wearing it that you're not supposed to touch your face and you should be putting your hand down. So our main idea behind this project was to use the ultrasonic sensor and this uses something called sonar, which, um, which uses an ultrasonic transmitter to emit high frequency sound waves and a receiver module, which records the time it takes for the sound wave to be reflected back after hitting the object. And so this, was, this can determine distance and we set our distance to about 10 centimeters, which is, uh, which is about 
uh, which is going to be close to the face to where we can notify the user to put their hand away, but still before they're actually in contact with their face. And so for our sonar or sound navigation ranging, the, f the general formula that it, we used was that the distance would be half the time times the speed, of, speed it takes for the sound to come back. And so here in the, on the, um, sorry, go, go back. Um, sorry, here in the uh, right hand, you can see the, in the diagram, you can see how the receiver module sends out um, the sound and how once it hits the object, the transmitter records how the, how long it takes for the signal to be reflected back. So the main human factor relating to our product basically allows consumers to reduce the cognitive thinking of touching their face so that individuals can continue their days and adapt to the warning system through the safe glove. It would also serve as something to allow a good change in learning behavior. In this specific project, we also took into account the size of a person and designed the glove to be able to fit one size. So we plan to change this for the future applications and would like to be able to share the glove with anybody who would want to use it. And in addition to this, we attempted to make everything compact, attempted with what we had, so that it's easily accessible for anyone who would like to use the glove. Another big aspect of the human factors we took into consideration was the organization of the glove because we wanted to make sure that everything fit onto one glove that and that it was comfortable and visually pleasing to the user. Sorry. Okay, now we move on to the survey information. So the majority of our responses targeted the age group of 18 to 24 year, years old. And out of a total of 39 people, the majority of them were between 18 to 24 and 7.7% 7 .7 were below 18 and the other 7.7% .7 were above 55. And this question was very important because it's just important to wash your hands and wash your face. And so 53.7% never forget, 28.3% forget multiple times, and 10.3% forget three to four times. The recommendations during the pandemic are to wash your hands frequently and use hand sanitizer. In the case of wearing gloves, hand sanitizer is still recommended, but safety is still increased. This question pertained a lot to how we wanted to how we wanted to build our glove. Um, the question is, how often do you touch your face when going out? And so this is this is response is based on how cognitively like people are aware of touching their face. And about twenty four point four percent said frequently, which is five plus times, and about nineteen point five percent said one to two times, and um, only seventeen point one percent were sure that they never touch their face but 22% were not sure whether they did touch their face or how many times that was. My bad, y'all. So this was our perk chart, and so this was our general guideline on how we wanted to start um, working or how we wanted to work on the project. So our main, um, during um, each of these transitions, we all had discussions, and our first discussion was our brainstorm, and then we discussed a lot of the details of how our project would work and how we would break it down. And then once we delegated roles, we had um, meetings to where we would work on, or we would um, look at what we have done and what we still need to be doing. So this is our purchase report and all of the components that we use came from the Elegoo Arduino kit that we already had. And um, the glove was already at home that we had. So 
we ended up not having to buy a lot of things outside of what we already um, had in our own houses. And this is our Gantt chart. So we actually ended up finishing a lot of our projects really early. So that gave us a lot of time to do testing and that gave us a lot of time to try to make our product to the best of its ability. On to what now? Um, if we were to develop this product more in the future, our future plans would include developing an app that would actually make the glove specialized for each person's wants, depending on how far away from the face the safe glove would notify them. And this would mean ratio choices on the app. We would also essentially like to further advance this glove by using smaller breadboards and making everything fit in a smaller ratio just so that it's more accessible, comfortable, and also more aesthetically pleasing. And of course, we would want to better revise the product to notify not only when or only when they're nearing their face, for example, not when someone reaches for their phone or anything else. Um, and you can move on to the next slide. And that concludes our presentation. That concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.